Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a YouTube made me buy it video. If you've never seen this kind of video, which I'm sure you have because I feel like this video has always been going around, like I've been seeing it for years, but recently I, I've been seeing it everywhere, which totally motivated me to do it myself. I'm basically gonna be sharing with you all the products that I purchased because of YouTube. I have been a huge YouTube watcher since I was in high school. It's like all I did. I've been on YouTube for three years, but I've been watching it for about six years now, six or seven, and there were so many things that like everyone was talking about at the same time. Things that were so hyped at the moment that I went out and purchased it myself. Purchases I made because of YouTube and I'm gonna be sharing them with you whether I like them or not, whether I think they were worth the hype or not, whether I still use them or I don't use them that much anymore. That's what we will be talking about today. So I'm not gonna go in any order. I'm just gonna grab from this pile and talk about things. And most of these products you guys will be familiar with because well, they was all over YouTube at one point. I'm gonna start with eyeshadow palettes. Now, I was looking through my collection and immediately these two palettes stood out to me. One more than the other one, but they were totally both purchased because of all the hype on YouTube. This one more though. This is the Urban Decay Naked Palette. If there is one thing in my collection that automatically reminds me of YouTube, is this. Out of everything I own, it's this. This just brings back so many memories. This is actually the first high-end purchase I ever really made. I saw three videos on this palette. There were three tutorials by three different YouTubers and I was like obsessed. It was like I needed to have this. I saw a video by Candy Johnson. She was like in her bathroom filming a makeup tutorial on this and then I saw Julia Graf and Marlena from Makeup Geek. OG YouTubers right there. Watching them made me totally buy this, and I don't regret it. I used this so much. It was my all-time favorite palette for so long. Unfortunately, I don't really use it that much anymore because I have so many other palettes, and I actually prefer my Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette over this one. I know everyone spoke about the Naked palette in their YouTube Made Me Buy It video, but it's just like the cult palette. All the Naked palettes were like all the rage on YouTube a few years ago. The same definitely goes for the Lorac Pro. This is the original Lorac Pro. I did get the second one sent to me and then all the other Pro palettes after that have been sent to me, but this one right here, I did purchase myself. Everyone and Day Mama was talking about this. Everyone had a makeup tutorial using this palette, so I went out and I purchased it, and I don't love it as much as I love the Naked palette or the Chocolate Bar palette, but it is a great palette. You have a row of mattes and then a row of shimmers. I personally prefer this one over the Lorac 2 and the 3, and it is something I don't regret buying because of YouTube. I think it was highly recommended and for a really good reason. So while I was looking at my bronzer drawer, this one immediately jumped out at me. This is the Benefit Hula Bronzer. This specific one I did not purchase. This has like my name on it and Benefit sent it to me, but I did purchase a Hula. I just don't have it anymore because I purchased it years ago and it was old, so I no longer have it. But I remember buying it because of YouTube. I feel like Benefit Hula and NARS Laguna bronzer were the only bronzers people were talking about a few years ago. Now so many companies have so many different products that you hear different YouTubers talk about different things, but loud. Everyone was talking about Benefit Hula. Everyone. It's the bronzer I'm wearing on my face right now. I do like it, but I have other bronzers in my collection that I like a little bit more. But when I did buy it, I did use it and I, I wore it all the time. Let me know in the comments below if you bought Hula because of YouTube. <laughs> or if you bought any of these because of YouTube. I remember the day that I purchased the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer for the first time. I was in Mississippi, I was in Sephora, and I picked up the shade Custard because this is the shade everyone was talking about. So not only were people talking about NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, they were talking about NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and Custard. It's like everyone was talking about Custard. So I went in not knowing and I picked up Custard, but it's much too dark for my under eyes. So I went in and ended up buying Vanilla, which is my perfect color for underneath the eyes. So I actually used to use Custard as foundation all the time. I would just dot it all over my face and then buff it in with a blending brush. And I love how this looks as a foundation, by the way. Another YouTube Made Me Buy It product was actually the NARS Sheer Glow. There was a time on YouTube where every single YouTuber was talking about NARS Sheer Glow. I ended up buying it, but it broke me out, so I returned it, so I can't talk about it today. But anyway, back to these. And I actually love it. It's my favorite concealer to this day. This one and the Tarte Shape Tape have been my ride or die concealers since I got them. I have repurchased vanilla time and time and time again. Love this concealer, and yes, I'm so glad YouTube made me buy it. The Jordana Best Lash Extreme was like everyone's cult favorite mascara for so long. And when I first bought it, I didn't like it. I thought that it made my eyelashes look chubby. <laughs> 
I don't know. This was even in an old, a very, very old, disappointing products video. This. Shocking, I know, because I actually love this mascara. It's only like $2, 2 or $3, and it's so volumizing, it's so amazing, and I think the fact that it had such a low price tag when it was such good quality made it so hyped on YouTube. Everyone was talking about this. So worth the hype. How many of you guys, and be honest with me, how many of you guys purchased the freaking MAC Fix Plus because everyone was talking about it on YouTube. I don't hear anyone talking about Fix Plus anymore. I'm exaggerating, I hear people talk about it, but when I purchased Fix Plus for the first time, everyone was talking about it. It was like in every video ever. This one is not the original Fix Plus, this is actually the lavender scent. MAC had like a limited edition Fix Plus collection. It had lavender, coconut, all that. When I first bought Fix Plus, I used it all the time. I always used it to intensify my shadows. If you have been watching me for a long time on YouTube, I still use it on my eyeshadows, just not as much as before. This is really good to apply to your face when you are done with your makeup. Once you've already powdered, once you've got all your powder products on your face, you spritz this all over your face and it like makes your skin look so nice. It takes away the powdery look to your skin. So I really, really love Fix Plus. There's a hundred different uses for it. I don't have to say anything. Just by showing you this, you guys know. You're like, yep, YouTube did make you buy that, yeah. This is the Laura Mercier Loose Setting Powder in the shade Translucent. I got the little one because it's cheaper than the big one. <laughs> I purchased this after hearing so many people rave about this. Till this day, it's like the most raved about powder, I think. I don't hear anyone talk about face powders. The way that I hear people talk about Laura Mercier Translucent, it's people's cult powder. It's their ride or die powder. I actually like it. I think it's a great powder. It just can tend to look a little bit powdery on my skin if I don't moisturize. But if you have oily skin, I think you would love this powder. It is very pricey, but they sell this small one for around $22. Okay, so I declutter my makeup pretty often. I mean, I, ha I still have a crap ton of stuff in my collection. But every once in a while, I'll go through my stuff, donate it, give it away, send it to Cuba. <laughs> I always send stuff to Cuba. And I was looking at my foundation collection and I was like, wow, none of these were like really hyped at a point. But then I saw this and I remembered. I remembered the mission I went on to buy it. This is the EX1 Invisiwear Liquid Foundation. There was a time on YouTube, at least for me, I saw everyone raving about this foundation. And I remember when I tried to purchase it for the first time, it was sold out and I feel like it was sold out for so long and then it took like forever to get to me. But I felt like I, I needed to have it. Out of all the foundations I own, there wasn't one that I was seriously yearning for as much as this one. I love it. It's the foundation I'm wearing right now. It's been a favorite foundation ever since I got it. I'm in the shade F100 and I would say if you are a little bit lighter than me, then none of the foundations would work for you because I'm pretty sure F100 is the lightest shade. I just recently heard that they came out with a ton of new colors though. They expanded their shade range. I haven't seen it, but I'm so glad they did. If they did, or if maybe I heard that as a rumor, I don't know. But the majority of their foundations are targeted towards people with kind of like an olive undertone. It looks so fresh and natural on the skin, but it will look like that all day. It's not super full coverage, like you can totally see my imperfections through this foundation, but it gives your skin a skin-like look. I completely love that it's a pump. I love the packaging. It's seriously, it's, it's a great foundation. And YouTube made me buy. Okay, so this isn't the original blush I purchased, but I gave mine away. But this is definitely the blush that YouTube made me buy. This is the Orgasm Blush by NARS. This one is just in a special packaging because NARS recently came out with like an oversized orgasm blush, and then they just ended up sending it to me. But way back when, even before I started my channel, I had purchased NARS Orgasm because I heard everyone raving about it. Literally everyone. This was the YouTube blush, NARS Orgasm. I remember going into the store and swatching it and not loving it, but buying it anyway because, I mean, everybody else loved it. There ha it has to be perfect. I don't love this blush. It's the blush I'm wearing on my cheeks today, but I've always thought it looked ugly on me. This one has a different formula or a different consistency than I remember because the Orgasm that I purchased years ago was so chunky. It was literally like chunky. Ah, and glittery and it emphasized all my pores. It was just like a, a fart of glitter and pink on my face And I don't know there are so many other blushes 
on the market that I love more. So many other NARS blushes I love way more than Orgasm. There's probably like a hundred of you guys watching like, what do you mean? That's my favorite blush. I wish I had the original Urban Decay primer potion that I purchased because I loved the old packaging. This is my primer potion in the shade Enigma, so totally not what I want to talk about. I just don't have the original anymore, but I remember... <sighs> I went into Sephora with my friend Amelia and the woman at Sephora was telling us about this new primer. It was from Urban Decay. It was amazing. It was called the Primer Potion. It came in like an actual potion. The old packaging looked like a little bottle. And I remember she had put it on the back of her hand and then applied an eyeshadow on top. And me and Amelia were like floored. We were like, what? Oh my god, what is this magic? We were shocked. We didn't even know that you were supposed to put on primer underneath eyeshadow. Like, we had never done that before. It was just incredible. And I didn't end up buying it, but when I went home that day, I was looking on YouTube and I realized, like, everyone was using the primer potion. It was literally everywhere. That or the Too Faced Shadow Insurance. Those two were, like, the only primers anyone was using. I went, like, the very next day. I went back to Sephora and I purchased it. I used it all the time. And now looking back, I don't really like the original primer potion anymore. I love this one in Enigma because it has color to it and it's a really nice base, but the original is just like a clear primer that really does nothing for me, honestly. How many of you guys purchased MAC Tan Pigment because everyone was raving about it? I'm wearing this on my eyes today. I'm wearing the original Naked palette all over my eyes, but I have this on my entire lid. And as I was putting it on today, I was like, oh my gosh, why haven't I used this in so long? This is such a beautiful pigment. It was in so many people's favorites videos. Like, I remember watching everyone speak about this. I think I even saw a video, yeah, Makeup by Ali posted a video of her mixing this in with her foundation, and it looked amazing. This was years ago, but I remember thinking like, I need MAC Tan pigment in my life. I also have to give a shout out to MAC Painterly Paint Pot because everyone was talking about this. Mine is already dried out and cracked. I totally need to throw this away. Ever since I discovered my Enigma Primer Potion, I don't even touch Painterly. They're both like the same tone, but this one is way less drying than this. I bought it because everyone was talking about it on YouTube, and Yeah, I mean, I used it for so long. It was a favorite for so long, but I have moved on from you. Yes, I have. Okay, so I'm going to talk about highlighters and then I'm going to jump into lip products to end this video. So lips will be last. If I can think of one highlight that was like ultimate highlight on YouTube for so long, I have to give that to the Mary Luminizer by The Balm. This one right here. I have this little trio of the Mary Luminizer, the Cindy Luminizer, and the Betty Luminizer. I did purchase a full-size Mary Luminizer, but mine ended up breaking, so I just stick to this little palette that I have. I don't feel like purchasing a brand new Mary Luminizer when you know I have it right here. You know what I mean? Everyone was raving about the Mary Luminizer, like saying it was the most intense highlight ever. I feel like the Mary Luminizer is the highlight that got everyone going. It was the start. It was the start of something beautiful. And for a good reason, it's such a beautiful like vanilla shade. Looks really, really glowy on the cheeks, buttery formula. The Mary Luminizer by The Balm is The Balm. Now, this one doesn't count because this is actually a present I got for Christmas. So does that count? <laughs> In my defense, I had wanted it so bad for Christmas because I heard everyone talk about it. So YouTube made me put it on my Christmas list. And that is the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in the shade Soft and Gentle. Now this is a brand new one, not brand new. I got it like seven, six months ago. This is their newer packaging. They used to not have this packaging. I used up my Soft and Gentle pretty much. Like it had been so used that there was like this weird film over it. So I ended up tossing that and getting a new one. This is the highlight I'm wearing on my cheeks today. It was the first highlight I had ever put on my face. I thought that I had like made it. I was like, ah, I barely use this highlight now. I have so many highlights I love more than this. I actually think that I heard people talk about this before I heard people talk about the Mary Luminizer. It was definitely like a cult favorite. Everyone was talking about Soft and Gentle for a point, and now no one talks about MAC Soft and Gentle. Literally no one. I hear zero about Soft and Gentle. And then the last highlight that I bought because everyone was raving about it on YouTube was the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the shade Opal. I purchased Opal and Moonstone myself before I started getting PR from Becca, but Opal was the one everyone was raving about. I just had to get my hands on it. And I remember walking into Sephora because Becca wasn't super known back in the day, like when I started watching YouTube. So when I heard all the rave and the fuss about Opal and I walked into my Sephora and I saw it there for the first time, like a new Becca display, I nearly peed my pants. I was like, oh my gosh, 
Do you guys have opal? Because I need it right now. And personally, I feel like opal is a little bit too dark for my skin tone. You can kind of see it on my face. Like if I were to apply this, you would kind of see a little bit of a stripe happening. When I do have self tan on, it is really, really beautiful. But when I am my natural like skin color, it's a little bit too dark. Okay, let's talk about some lip products. YouTube made me buy. If I can think of one lip product that I bought just because YouTube was raving about it. It has to be Kat Von D Lolita. I know everyone has been mentioning this in this type of video, but it's because it's true. This is a mini size because I have no idea where my full size Lolita is, but I remember that it was sold out for so long. Everyone at one point on YouTube was raving about Lolita, and I feel like it's still a lip color that everyone is talking about. It's the color I'm wearing on my lips today. I know there's been like different formulations and different colors, like the original Lolita, and then the second batch, I don't know. It's just, Lolita is one of those colors that looks so different on everyone. I think it's a stunning liquid lipstick. I don't love the formula. Lolita can look a little bit patchy on my lips. I do have to go over it two or three times, but I love the color so much. I look past that. Definitely, this was so hyped on YouTube that it just it made me want it so much more. And the same goes for the Stila All Day Liquid Lipstick in Patina. There was a point where I could not get my hands on this for months. It was sold out, just like Lolita, like constantly sold out. When liquid lipsticks were first introduced to like the beauty community, like when everyone started raving about liquid lipsticks, you know, like that wave was coming in. It was like Lolita and Patina, Lolita and Patina, Lolita and Patina. If you weren't raving about Lolita, you were raving about Patina. It's like everyone. I used to love the Stila liquid lipsticks. They were my favorite formula ever until I got introduced to a ton of other brands and now they're definitely not my favorite formula. They're a little bit drying and a little bit crumbly on the lips, but this one I don't have any problems with. It's a really, really, really stunning color. Okay, so MAC Stone Lip Liner was so hard to get along with Soar. Soar, Whirl, and Stone, I think, were like the hyped lip liners on YouTube. I cannot find my Whirl, and I cannot find my Soar lip liner anywhere. I don't know where they went, I don't know who took them. And I definitely purchased them because everyone was raving about them. I have used this Stone lip liner maybe like twice in my life. I don't love the MAC lip liners, at least not the wooden ones. I really, really, really love their Pro Longwear lip liners. I think they're really creamy, they last all day. They don't tug at my lips. I don't know, their, their wooden lip liners are not that great and everyone raves about them and I don't know why because they're like drying and they're just not the best. I do not think these are worth the money at all, but Stone, YouTube made me buy you. Okay, and then the last two products I'm gonna be talking about today, one is a lipstick and one is a lip gloss. The Buxom White Russian Lip Gloss was like everyone's favorite lip gloss for a while. The first person I heard talk about it was Nicole Guerrero. I was hearing so many people talk about White Russian. Not Buxom lip glosses in general, like White Russian specifically. And I had purchased this when I first started my channel. I remember I had just recently started my channel when I bought this and it was the only lip gloss I wore, like for months. Still to this day, White Russian is probably my favorite lip gloss of all time. If I could get rid of every single lip gloss I own and only keep one, Buxom's White Russian. So my last item for the video today is a MAC lipstick. My very first video on YouTube was actually my MAC lipstick collection. I'm pretty sure that was my first video ever. It's probably the most embarrassing video on YouTube because like halfway through the video, it gets super dark. You cannot see the lipsticks on my lips, yet I posted it anyway. I don't know why, but I did. Amateur. Now I don't really care for MAC lipsticks anymore. Like they smell really great, they're really creamy, but there's a ton of other brands out there that make really great lipsticks also. But MAC Candy Yum Yum was a lipstick that everyone was obsessed with. Everyone. It was either this or MAC Angel. Kim Kardashian wore MAC Angel like in a picture or something like that and then People on YouTube went balls crazy and everyone was talking about MAC Angel. But when MAC Candy Yum Yum came out, everyone, I saw this on everyone. I feel like this hot pink lip was really, really, really in style before the whole brown lip came into trend. Everyone was into these pinks and don't tell me no. I became obsessed with this color. I wore it all the time. I would wear it to like birthday parties. <laughs> a picnic on the beach like I don't care I was wearing this hot pink lip everywhere I went so yeah guys that completes this video there are a ton of other products I purchased because everyone was raving about them on YouTube I still do that till this day if something is super overhyped I oh my gosh I'm not done I'm not done I have to talk about this crap 
I found this underneath my sink and I was like, oh, I have to include that. I have to include that. This is from the brand Numi. And this is, it doesn't have a name. It's just a, what do you call these? Crimper? One of these things? You go like this and you go like this and you go like this and then it crimps your hair like super 90s. Yes, okay, everyone at a point was talking about this. Do you remember when everyone was talking about Numi? It was like, oh my gosh, I love Numi. Numi's the best, Numi's that. Yeah, where's Numi now, huh? Nobody talks about Numi anymore. Just saying. I'm someone personally, I'm sorry. I just, I never fell into the Numi hype. I mean, obviously I did once. But it was just a brand I always thought was Insane. They would charge you like $300 for a curling wand, but then they gave you a discount code that took off like $200. They would give you like the craziest discount codes, like save $200 on a $300 wand. And that always made me question it like, is it really $300 then? Or are you just pretending you're making me save so much money? But I had seen this specific wand going around a lot and it looked so beautiful. People were like crimping their hair. It just looked stunning that I went and I purchased it. This is good while it is really, really bad. So the cool thing about this wand is that it's supposed to be a, like it has a lock button here and it's supposed to be a curling wand and a crimper so it's like a two-in-one wand so even though these were super pricey i thought okay that's worth my money because i get two in one you know i get to curl my hair and crimp my hair what could be better this sucks the crimper is awesome like you can crimp your hair with this i still use this from time to time because it does a good job of crimping your hair and i think the look is really cool super 90s i love it but this does not curl your hair like this part this sucks. You have to have like super thin hair and even then you have to like, okay, you have to use like this much hair, like this much. And then you have to leave your hair there for like a 17 hours, more or less. And then once you let it go, you'll get like a baby wave. I was so disappointed the first time I tried to curl my hair with this. I was so mad. I was like, I'm done with this. This is something that was so hyped on YouTube and in my personal opinion was 100% not worth the freaking hype. Maybe I got a crappy one, but... Ugh. Um, now I'm officially done. These were products that I purchased because everyone was talking about them on YouTube and for the most part They turned out to be really really great products Leave me a comment down below letting me know what you purchased because everyone was talking about it on YouTube Whether it was like years ago or recently Let me know and also let me know if it ended up being worth your money or not. Did you hate it? Did you love it? Was it worth the hype? Was it not? But yeah, that completes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye I feel like a lot of, oh, I feel like a lot of, what is that Nars Foundation called? Oh, of the Mary Luminaz, was that even English? If you weren't raving about Lolita, you were raving about,